Your Massachusetts real estate market update for July 18, 2022. Hey, it's Jeff Chubb. And last week, I made two predictions that looked to be coming true. We're going to talk about those two predictions. Also, we're going to talk about how there are people out there just creating mass hysteria and looking at month-over-month data and how the real estate market's crashing. It's just simply not going to not true. And I'm going to show you how and why looking at Massachusetts data, specifically going back in the past and how the two don't necessarily correlate. And I'm also going to make a prediction about inventory inventory levels where I see them going by the end of August leading into that very important fall market. So to look at prediction number one that I made last year or excuse me last week and that was that the Fed was going to make an increased interest rate of 75 to 100 basis points. I said I was pretty confident it was going to be 100 basis points. A couple things have happened since last week. Number one the CPI consumer price inflation came out. It did not settle at all. Even more so the Producers price inflation, the PPI came out even bigger, which ultimately it's the producer prices that are going to lead to the consumer prices. Inflation has not started to calm down as we can currently see it. It is pretty much a guarantee now. If I think it's because people watch, must have watched my video. But now the market is saying that yes, the Fed, they're going to increase their interest rates and they're now betting it's going to be a 100 basis point increase, which I am betting as well. But let's take a look. Fed talking about big rate hikes, but mortgage rates move lower. Why did mortgage rates move lower if the Fed is going to increase it? Now the market's betting that the Fed's going to increase it. these uh, interest rates are going to go up just next week because that's when the Fed uh, meets. And the reason why is because our interest rates aren't tied to that federal funds rate, really. They're tied to the 10-year Treasury. And if you're looking at what the big money is actually betting on and expecting right now is that, yes, interest rates are going to go up until around this time next year. However, at that time, the Fed's going to need to move into quantitative easing because we're going to be in a recession and at that point in time they feel that inflation will have been quelled right will have been taken care of and that they're going to start very slowly and very many like minimal decreases in the uh fed federal funds bon benchmark rate um that is what the big market is betting um but ultimately it's right slightly going down by 2023 what i can continue to and i continue to say is interest rates they're gonna continue to go up they, they right now is a great time to buy because interest rates are so low yes five and a half percent it is not that bad of a rate historically speaking it's still really good rate and i personally here's another prediction i personally don't believe we're ever going to see the interest rates of two or three percent ever again or at least in my lifetime um, so prediction number two was that massachusetts inventory levels they were starting to level off right where we were going to stop seeing the 10 12 15 percent increase month or week over week in the amount of inventory coming on the market and it looks like for the last two or three weeks that is exactly the case of what's happening um, so Stay tuned because we're also going to talk about builder confidence level and we're also going to talk about uh, my uh, prediction for where inventory levels are going to be in August at the end of August of this year going into that fall market. But first, let's jump in and let's take a look at those single family numbers. Now, single families, we had 5,520 single family homes currently on the market as of the end of Monday of this week. That is a 3.84% increase over where we were last year, uh, last week, where there was 5,316 single family homes on the market. Now, we did have um, 1,376 new homes come to the market in the last week with 1,230 single family homes actually going under agreement in this last week. Now, it is important to note that 1,230 number is actually 10% below the level of homes that were going under agreement this time last year. So our sales are decrease in the amount of sales that are happening in the marketplace as we see it right now for single family homes in the state of Massachusetts from the increases of interest rates and whatever else could be slowing down the market. Right now, what we're seeing in our in our data, right, is a 10% decrease for single family homes. Uh, we had 1,031 single family homes sell in the last week with an average sale price of $825,644 and a median sales price of $635,000. Now, the months of inventory actually went up slightly to 1.51 months worth of inventory. This is still signaling a very, very strong seller's market. It's 0.04 months more than it was last week and it's important to note that this is still well below the 1.68 months that we registered on june 27th which was the high for 2022 for that months of inventory still a very strong seller's market 
But if you're a buyer in this marketplace, you definitely are able to get more value than you could for a house than you could just you know three or four months ago. So let's look at condos uh, in the state of Massachusetts. The condo market, um, we currently have 2,814 condos on the market in the whole entire state of Massachusetts. Now this is a 2.85% increase from last week where we had 2,736 condos on the market. We saw 562 new condos come to market with 425 condos uh, going under agreement last week. Now, this is a big one. This was a 22% decrease year over year in the amount of condos that went pending, which is something that we definitely want to keep our eye on. We saw 404 condos in Massachusetts sell just last week with an average sale price of a hair under $645,000. And the median sales price was about 536,000 months of inventory is 1.64 months worth of inventory. Now this is 0.08 months more than it was just last week. Um, something to note there, right? That was a lot more significant increase. Uh, also another thing to note, this is a year long high. 1.64 months is, is the highest we've ever registered for uh, week over week data. Um, for the whole entire year of 2022. So again, something that we need to keep our eye on, still a very strong seller's market. If you are a seller looking to sell a property, it is a great market to sell a property in, because again, it is a strong seller's market. If you're a buyer looking to buy a property, it's ultimately a great time, because you can again get more value than you could just three or four months ago, and at the same time, you are locking in that lower uh, interest rate of five, five and a half percent. So so let's take a look at the builder confidence levels, right? So what we saw was the record setting drop in builder confidence in July. And when we actually look at the graph, you can see it right here, a huge drop. Now, it's important to note that this is not nearly the drop that we saw when COVID hit. I mean, that was kind of obvious. We were all wrong, by the way, all really wrong. Um, so, you know, but it's also important to note that we are still well above where we were in 2008 from builder confidence. And look, builders, you know, they're, they're we're starting to feel it a little bit, right? We're starting to see them really reduce their prices. We're starting to uh, see them increase the uh, commission rates that they're willing to pay us agents when we bring them a buyer to their property. They're starting to offer more incentives to buyers in order to lure them to these properties because they have a lot of what's called shadow inventory on the market. And this is a really great news when we talk about the inventory levels in general, because ultimately what this means is we're going to see the last apply from the inventory side from the builder part of our market, which will help taper off our level of supply. Again, here in the state of Massachusetts, we haven't seen a huge building boom like we have in other parts of the country. Think Phoenix or Charlotte, really down south. Um, so we're not as affected here as, as in other parts of the market. We continue to remain really strong. So now I want to talk about this month over month and why that is so stupid to look at when it comes to uh, trying to call a quote unquote market crash, right? Let's take a look at the market data that we see sales price month over month, right? If we were to take a look at this, we're still seeing month over month increases in the state of Massachusetts, which you can see here for the last four months. But take a look at this, right? Just last year, July 2021, August, September, October, right? Those were all decreases in month over month in sales prices. I'm pretty sure we can all agree that home prices went up in 2021. That's why this is such a stupid metric to look at. But to even give you some more data points and make making sure that you're getting everything that you're paying for. Let's take a look at the sales price month over month change, right? Now look at this, like back here in 2010, we can all agree that this is, has been pretty much all home price appreciation levels, right? And you can in this time see a lot of month over month decreases, right? This is why this is such a stupid metric to look at and why nobody should be looking at month over month data. Now metrics that we should be looking at are year over year data. So let's take a look at those. So if we look at a really narrow timeline, just the last two years, you can see units sold, which I think this is a pretty interesting metric to look at. But in the last 12 months, we have actually had decreases in the amount of units sold compared to, uh, you know, the month beforehand, right? But look at the home sale price increases that we've been seeing right here, right? We have still been seeing the home price increase month over month, or I should say year over year, right? You can see it here. Now there's no doubt about it. It has slightly decreased from where we saw it um, just two years ago, but that's a good thing. That's what we want. We want home sale prices to level off. We don't want these huge, 
you know, 15, 20% year over year, month over month increases. That is not what we want. That's really what the Fed doesn't want. And that's what they're going to make sure doesn't continue to happen. So this is all really interesting and great data. But let's let's expand this a little bit. And let's look at it from, you know, back in 2006, 2007, to really get an idea, is this just like it was back then? Now, look, units sold back in 2006, 2007, you can see all these huge decreases, right? Right, this year-long decrease, which look at the correlation in prices, right? We saw some huge decreases in the prices that we saw for single-family homes in the state of Massachusetts. But does a decrease in the amount of sales necessarily correlate with the decrease in the amount uh, or in the price of a home? Well, as we can see here, again, we've had another 12 months of decreases in the amount of homes sold in the state of Massachusetts, but yet the pricing continues to remain higher, right? It is definitely a decrease in the amount of money we're making on our house compared to two years ago, but those two numbers and metrics don't necessarily correlate either. And I just think that's really important to know because, you know, ultimately you have a lot of people out there screaming and yelling at the top of their lungs, at the top of a mountain saying, hey, Armageddon is coming in the real estate market. In my opinion, there continues to be no better hedge, no better place to park your money in a high inflationary environment than real estate, especially if you're locking in your mortgage rate, right, at a, at, you know, four, five, six percent, right? If you're locking in that rate and, and inflation is 12 percent or 11 percent or 10 percent, you're, you're getting a negative carry there, but I don't want to get myself carried away. End of August prediction. I predict that we're going to see around 6,500 single family homes on the market at the end of August. So in about six weeks, ultimately, we're going to see an increase of about an additional thousand units. Now let's take a look at the comparison from last year. So we actually hit a record for the total amount of inventory that we had on the market in the third week of September last year, as you can see here, 4,975 units on the market. So if my prediction holds true, right, then we're going to have about 1,500 additional units going into the fall market, um, which I, I can make another prediction with certainty. Last year, we had a huge drawdown in the amount of inventory in the market. That's because we were selling a lot more houses that were coming on the market. I can say with certainty that I do not believe that that is going to happen. We're not going to see that this year. But the whole point of it is, is our record was about 5,000 units last year. And right now we're sitting at, what was it, 5,500? Uh, yeah, 5,500 units. We're not all that high above where our inventory levels were last Last year, I do continue to think that they are going to continue to grow. But as I said from my prediction just last week, it looks to be true that we're kind of leveling off in the amount of inventory gains that we're ultimately going to see, at least for this summer. I'm Jeff Chubb. Should you have any questions or want to talk about your specific situation, feel free to give me a call or put comments in the uh, comments below. I really appreciate you liking this as well as sharing this. So that way, you know, again, just fighting the mass hysteria that our market is crumbling because it really isn't. We can continue to have a really, really strong real estate market. So until next week.